This video is for Parker solenoid maintenance. The video is geared for a shocker as shown or a nerve, uh, but the Parker solenoid is also used in other guns like an Impulse, Bushmaster, Intimidator, some others. So if you have one of those guns you can use this video uh, for maintenance on those as well. Just skip over the uh, shocker removal part. But since I have a shocker I'll start with that. First step is to remove the uh, wire harness from the upper board and also remove the eye wire from the upper board. Both these just simply pull off so they're not hard to do. Now what you're going to have to do at this point is remove the solenoid from the body uh, which is attached to the manifold by these two screws right here. They're called the spacer screws. So take your 1 16th inch Allen wrench, unscrew the screws. There's one. Once the other screw becomes loosened, the solenoid will move around. And once the threads disengage, the solenoid can come off the body. Now the manifold is still located on the body. It's got three little tiny O-rings stuck to the top of it, but you're not going to mess with those at the time. Just set this aside. The two spacer screws will still be in the solenoid here, so you can remove those and set them aside as well. Now, the solenoid is divided into a couple parts. This is the spool, which is the part you're going to have to regrease. The pilot's in the middle, and this is the coil, which is the uh, electromagnet part. The board attaches to the coil at this end, so you're not going to want to um, be very rough with it. So you want to, of course, be very careful with it. Don't screw around with the board. Don't move it. Don't try to pull it off. It doesn't come off. It has to be desoldered. Don't do that. Um, for disassembly, you're going to have to separate the spool section from the rest of the sections. This is done by taking a small screwdriver and inserting it into the screws at the long end. Once both of them come loose, the coil and pilot will just come apart. There's a butterfly gasket right here. Uh, it's the black part seen. It might come off with the pilot, it might not, it doesn't really matter. But I prefer to have it be installed inside the pilot section. It has a small depression that it fits inside, so you can just drop it in there. It'll make reassembly a little bit easier. Set these parts aside, you won't mess with those. Uh, now flip the spool around and you're going to unscrew this other end, which is the end cap. It's also held on by two small screws with a, a Phillips head screwdriver. Once the two screws are loose, the end cap will spring off because it has a small spring underneath. And again, there's a butterfly gasket there which may or may not come off inside the end cap. doesn't really matter. Now the small spring came off inside. It's cone shaped. You don't want to lose that. Got to have that. It's a required part. Um, at this point, the spool is just stuck inside the solenoid housing, so you can take needle nose pliers and grab the small end facing the end cap and pull it straight out. The spool is the only real part you have to clean in the whole solenoid. You can do this by taking a napkin or a cloth or paper towel, anything you want, and gently cleaning it off. It has a number of uh, O-rings located on there, so you don't want to be damaged at all. If you would like, you can also clean the spool housing using a Q-tip, but you have to be careful to not leave any small hairs on the inside edge, or else it might screw things up. Once those are clean, you can go ahead and reassemble the solenoid, but first you'll have to regrease the spool. And do that with a little bit of uh, shocker lube, or Dow 33, one or the other. Um, Start with one end and just go around, put a nice light coat on there. The O-rings are grouped in a pair, so you can get them two at a time. Flip it around and do the last two, and that's good. Now what I'm going to do is take the spool and insert it back into the spool housing. Now, the spool housing looks identical on both sides, except that one side has a small ring around right where the spool goes in. That side faces this flat end. One side of the spool is flat, the other side has a small little nipple pointing out the side. You want the flat end to be where the uh, small ring is on the, on the housing. Push it all the way in. Now, you're going to put the end cap back on. You first have to take the small end cap spring, put it down around the little small nipple edge. The small end faces in, the large end faces out. Now with the end cap, there's a small line on one side of it. The line has to face down toward the shocker body. Now on this one, the line is right there, and the bottom of the shocker body is right here, so I'm going to put it on like this. 
if the end cap is on upside down, then the gun will leak or it won't shoot or something like that. Uh, either way, it's not going to work. So you're going to have to put that on the right way. And with it in position, just screw the screws back down. Now you can test it to see if it works by pushing in on the other end and it should spring back slightly. It won't spring back a lot. It might even not spring back at all, but it should move uh, a little bit freely on its own. Now take the remaining parts of the solenoid, which are the pilot and the coil, insert it back onto the spool edge. And just tighten that back down. I'm not going to go into disassembly of the pilot and the coil is not necessary to do for regular maintenance, so you don't have to worry about that. You're now ready to uh, put it back on the gun. So take the two spacer screws and insert them into their little uh, positions on the board. Take the shocker body and align the solenoid like that. And when it's in position, screw the screws down. Now these are only to be screwed down hand tight. You can't over tighten them or else you'll strip out the manifold and it'll be leaking and causing problems. So just hand tight, don't over tighten, it'll be good. Now everything's ready to go. You can plug your electronics back in as necessary. And uh, mirror it back up, test it out, make sure it works.